Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded, and I'm your host, Irv Risch. And today, we're going to continue on in our reading of the Inner Chamber and the Inner Life by Andrew Murray. And I'm going to get right into our our reading today because it's a little longer reading. And we're going to be looking at doing and knowing Two important things, doing and knowing. But Jesus said, Ye rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Luke 2.28 And then in John 7.17 we read, If a man willeth to do his will, he shall know. Two good verses. Some time ago I received a letter from one who evidently an earnest Christian asking me for some hints to help him in a Bible study. My first thoughts was to answer that there are so many addresses and booklets on the subject that he would find all I could say better said already. After a little while, certain uh, experiences in my own um, immediate circle made me feel how needful instructions was on the all-important subject, and I found there were points to which it uh, appeared uh, desirable that special prominence should be given. I take up my pen with the earnest prayer and hope that what I write may be from God, the fountain of light and life, to help young people Uh, children to see how they may draw from his precious word all the divine instructions and nourishment and all the abundant joy and strength which he has there laid up for them. I suppose uh, addressing a young Christian who has said to me, help me to study my Bible, gives me some rules to guide me and to how to begin and how to go on, so I may know my Bible well. The very first thing I have to say to him is, the things that come before all else is this. In your Bible study, everything will depend upon the spirit in which you come to it upon the object or end you propose to yourself. In worldly things, a man rules and urges on by the end or aim he sets before himself. It is not otherwise with the Bible. If your aim is simply to know the Bible well, you will be disappointed. If you think that the uh, through knowledge of the Bible will necessarily be a blessing, you are mistaken, and some it is a curse. To others it is powerless. It does not make them either holy or happy. To some it is a burden. Uh, It depresses them instead of quickening them and lifting them up. Well, and what ought then to be the aim or end? Uh, the real uh, disposition of the Bible student. God's word is food, bread from heaven, and the first need for Bible study is a great hunger after righteousness, a, a, a great desire to do all God's will. The Bible is a light. The first condition uh, to its enjoyment is a heavenly longing to walk in God's way. Is not this what the text I have placed above teach you? Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. There is no uh, blessedness in hearing or knowing God's word apart from keeping it. The word is nothing if it be not kept, obeyed, done. If a man willeth to do his will, he shall know. Well, according to this saying, 
of our Lord. All true knowledge of God's word depends upon these being first the will to do it. Is not this the very lesson we are enforcing? God's will refuses to unlock the real meaning and blessing of his word to any but those who uh, will is definitely set upon doing it. It must, I must read my Bible with one purpose, whatsoever he says unto me, do it. Why this should be so is really uh, a certain, when we think of the words are meant for, they stand between the will and the deed. A man's will to do something uh, for you before he does it, he expresses his thoughts or purpose in words. Then he fulfills the words by doing what he has promised. Even so, with God, it's so true. His words have their value from what he does. In creation, his word was with power. He speak, and it was done. In grace, he does what he says. David's prayer in Second Samuel 7.25, Do as thou hast spoken. Solomon said at the uh, consecration of the temple, Who has with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth? Who has performed his words that he spake? Who has kept that which thou didst promise? Who speaks it with thy mouth and has fulfilled it with thy hand? Let thy word be verified which thou hast spoken. In the prophets, God says, I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. And he says, what thou hast spoken is done. The truth of the, the worth of what God promised consists in this, that he does it. His word of promise is meant to be done. This is no less true of his word of commands or things which he meant us to do. If we do not do them, if we seek to know them, if we admire their beauty and praise and their wisdom, but do not do them, we delude ourselves. There is meant to be done. It is only as we do them that they really mean and bless blessings can be unfolded to us. It is only as we do them that we really can grow in the divine life. Walk worthy of the Lord unto the pleasing, bearing fruit unto every good work. This first, then, an increase in the knowledge of God. It is only when we approach God's word with the same object which God has in view that they should be done that we can have any hope of blessings. Is there not what we see all around us in the pursuit of knowledge or in any branch or trade? The apprentice or the pupil is expected to put the lessons he received into practice. Only then is he prepared for further teaching. And even so, in the Christian life, Bible study is mere theory, um, ple uh, pleasant experience of mind and imagination, worth little or nothing for a life of true holiness or Christlikeness, until the student be ready never to open or close his Bible without making God's purpose his own, his very own, and hearkening when he says, do all that I speak. This is what marks a saint of saints of old. So Abraham went as the Lord had spoken to him. 
as the Lord has commanded Moses, so did he, uh, is the description of the man who is a servant, was faithful in all his house. And of David we read, I have found a man after my own heart, who shall do all my will. Uh, we find in Psalms, we read, or uh, we hear him speaking with God about his word and praying for divine light and teaching, but even ac accompanied by the vow of obedience or some other expression of love and delight. It is the doing of God's will that ever with God's own Son is the one secret of entering into the favor and mind of God. Well, I have just been reading Mr. Moody's new book, uh, Pleasure and Profit in Bible Study. I doubt not many, but many will avail themselves of the suggestions it contains. They will think rightly uh, what he has uh, helped the man like Mr. Moody can help me too. And yet they may be disappointed. They must be unless they bring the Bible what uh, Mr. Moody brought, an honest desire to do whatever he saw God wanted him to do. Young Christians, I beseech you, in the mercies of God, uh, when you ask God to lead you into the treasures of his word, into the uh, palaces where Christ dwelleth, do it as one who presents himself a living sacrifice, ready to do whatever God shall speak. Do not think, this a matter of course. It is a deeper importance than to know. This is more uh, f frequently absent from Bible study. And you think, seek it yourself with deep humility. The first need for enjoying your food is hunger. The first uh, requirement of the Bible study is a simple uh, determining, longing to find out what God wants you to do and a dead, earnest resolution to do it. If any man will it to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. To him, the word of God will be opened up. Oh, very good reading today. And with that, I am going to end our podcast. Until next time. And uh, next time we get together, we're going to be looking at the blessedness of the doer. With that said, I'm going to end our podcast. Bye for now.